Hello, or possibly welcome back if this isn't your first visit here. My name is Michael Steele. I'm one of the Math 3 or Accelerated Math 3 teachers at Franklin High School this year. And I'm going to be working through and guiding you through the Essential Skills Quiz model that is going to address some of the big topics that you're going to be tested on pretty frequently over the course of this year. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the special right triangles question. I think this is question number seven. Yeah, question number seven, as it turns out. So we're going to work through each of the problems. I'll talk you through all of the big mechanics of what this looks like, show you a good foolproof way to do it that won't get you into hot water when you apply sort of one simple technique that only works if it's set up in a particular way. And hopefully you'll walk out feeling pretty comfortable and refreshed with how to address these special right triangles. Without further ado, assuming my computer is going to cooperate this time, let's jump in. So our task here is pretty straightforward. You're going to be doing the same thing with two different triangles every single time when you hit question number seven. We're told to solve the special right triangles and to leave our answers exact but those special right triangles, you know, are going to vary a little bit. Like you'll be given different sides over the course of the, the questions. So basically our job is to come up with a strategy that's going to work pretty much every time, despite the fact that the problems are going to sort of morph around. Well, the first thing to note is that we've got two different triangles here, and you'll notice they are definitely not drawn to scale. That's part of the problem situation here. We're trying to get you to read the triangles carefully. But it's worth reminding you that there are really two different special right triangles that we're going to look at. The first of those special right triangles is going to be the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And those 30s and 60s and 90s represent, of course, the angle measures of each of the interior angles of this triangle. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to set this up and think about this proportionally. Now, every single special right triangle is proportional to every other one or similar to it, which means there's going to be a proportion between corresponding sides of those similar triangles. Those ratios are what we're going to use to kind of set this up. And I'll show you what that means in just a second in case you haven't run into it before. But basically the side length opposite the 30 is always going to be 1. The side length opposite the root the 60 is going to be the root 3. And the side length opposite the right angle is going to be 2. Now it's not going to be exactly those numbers because of course the triangles are going to be similar. But this is going to be sort of the base proportion. We're going to compare to this triangle every single time we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Likewise down here, when we go to look at the 45, 45, 90 triangle, which once again is also not drawn to scale, and I notice I am also not drawing it to scale, sorry. Basically what we've got is an isosceles right triangle. In fact, there are times, in fact, on the AP calculus exam, if I remember right this year, there was a question that talked about an isosceles right triangle in the free response section. So isosceles, of course, meaning two sides are the same, and since it's right, that means it has to have the same base angles. And those angles are gonna be 45 degrees and 45 degrees. In this case, because of those 45s, these two sides, the two legs of the right triangle, are going to have the same proportion, so we'll say they're each one, and then that means our hypotenuse will be proportionally root 2 times that. And basically these are going to be what we use to set up proportions to find all the side lengths of those special right triangles that we're about to look at. So that's what I'm going to show you, the technique to attack a special right triangle, and what that's going to look like. And of course, since I'm going to use these on the next page, I'll copy them over too. So what I want to do first is I first want to label, and I'm going to do that on the inside of the right triangle, I'm going to label the original proportions, so that, that way we'll have something to compare to. So opposite the 30 degrees is going to be 1, opposite the 60 degrees is root 3, and opposite the right angle is going to be 2, also known as the hypotenuse will be 2. Now what I want to do is set up proportions so that we can actually solve for what's there. So what I want to do first is identify the proportion or the side that we have both pieces for both the interior proportion and the outside length so we know the outside is 22 here and the inside is 1 and then basically what I'm going to do is set up a pair of proportions as in equations of two ratios with each of those so what it's going to look like is this 22 over 1 is going to be equal to y over 2 and on the flip side 22 over 1 is going to be equal to x over root 3 You'll notice each time I do this, I'm doing outside over inside. You don't have to do it that way. I would just recommend it because we're going to be asking you to find the outside length. We're always going to know sort of the interior proportionality because they're always proportional to every other special right triangle of that type. You know what I mean? So, well, you can't answer. Don't answer that. You can't. I'm a computer screen. I'm on a computer screen. I'm not a computer screen unless I am. So in any event, what we've just created are two proportions, but those are two proportions that we can solve pretty fast, right? These aren't too bad. So whether you want to think about it as cross multiplying or for my case, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply both sides by two. 
so that, that we can get rid of that over two, we're gonna end up with, and I should probably move that over here just so we got it. We're gonna end up with, it looks like 44 equals y. And over on the other side, we'll do the same sort of strategy. We'll multiply both sides by root three. So when we do, we're going to end up with, it looks like 22 root three equals x. And there are our two side lengths. So we use the proportionality of the 30, 60, 90 right triangle to set up a proportion that we were able to solve for the missing side lengths. So voila. Now if you're thinking, well shoot, what are we gonna do for the 45, 45? Exactly the same thing, just with the 45, 45, 90 ratios. So over here we have opposite the 45s, we're gonna have ones. So one and one, and then the hypotenuse will be root two. So now once again, looking at the pieces, we've got these two the same. We're gonna set up proportions with those two parts. So we'll have seven over one, which obviously is just seven, but we'll stay consistent for now. Seven over one equals y over root two, and seven over one equals x over one. Now in this case, the second one is trivial. Seven over one is seven, and x over one is x. So that means x equals seven. On the first one, we have to do a little bit more work, but this is familiar work. We're gonna multiply both sides by root two. And then because seven over one is just seven, this comes out pretty clean we'll get that y is equal to seven square root of two. And once again, we've found the missing side lengths. So again, it's all about knowing, of course, like this is one of those ones where you do really have to know something. You have to know the special right triangles as far as their proportions, the one, two, root three, and the one, one, root two setups for each of those. And then you've just gotta be able to place them correctly and solve pretty simple proportions in order to finish this thing off. That means then, of course, the question that might pop up is, well, how are you gonna handle, like what's, what's gonna change here? What could make this possibly difficult? And I would say it's less what's gonna be difficult than sort of what you're given. You might just have some slightly more awkward proportions to have to solve for, or some slightly more awkward looking expressions that might require you to rationalize the denominator. So here's where we're jumping into. This is just our second problem here. I'm gonna start in the same place. What I'm doing here, by the way, too, is I'm not ever just labeling the sides and just going with it. I'm actually reading the angles. So 30 degrees means that we're gonna have that one on the opposite side to it. Opposite the 60 is going to be the root three. And then our hypotenuse is gonna be two. Likewise, down below, 45, 45 will be one, one, and root two. Again, always make sure you're reading the triangle because of course we could change the orientation on you at any time. From here, I'm gonna set up our proportions. So looking in here, I've got 21 over root three, or I got 21 root three, x and one, y and two, and then I'm gonna set up my proportions. So 21 over root three is equal to y over two, and 21 over root three is equal to x over one. So now as we dive into this for the first time, you might notice already that these ones are just a little bit more awkward than the first ones were. Um, I can't disagree with you there. Our starting point to solve here is gonna be exactly what you'd expect. We'll multiply both sides by two right off the bat, and that's gonna give us 42 over root three is equal to y. The only problem is, that, and again, this is correct. This is numerically equivalent, it's exact, there's no issues there, but we're expecting you to rationalize the denominator, or at least many of you will be expected to rationalize the denominator, so let's make sure we can do that. What that means is we wanna make sure we're not dividing by a square root. Um, this actually goes back to, if memory serves, the abacus or the slide rule, some of the early sort of mechanical calculators that existed, not as necessary now, but still something that many organ books, math problems expect you to actually be able to do. Our mathletes competitions actually require this as well. So to rationalize the denominator, what you're gonna do is gonna multiply up and down by the radical. And of course, if you multiply up and down by the same thing, it doesn't change its value, it just sort of changes its form. And when we do that, 42 root three is going to be exactly that, 42 root three, and then root three times root three is gonna be three. I feel like I keep moving these triangles over, I don't have quite as much room as I'd like to, but there we go. And now in here, the last little thing I'll point out is that 42 over three actually simplifies to 14 over one, which means that our values here are going to be y equals 14 root three, and then of course on the second one, I'm not gonna multiply by one because it's already there, but I do need to rationalize the denominator here. And when I do, I'm going to get 21 root three over three, which you can already see simplifies to seven root three. So I'm not gonna belabor that point. So we get 14 root three and seven root three. 
our two values for the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Now for our second one, we're gonna follow the same strategy. And again, what's nice here, by the way, you may have caught this on the first one, but X and Y are gonna always be the same length. So really we don't have to do this one twice. In fact, I'm only gonna do it for X and then we'll just point out that X has to equal Y automatically. So for here, I'll just do X. So we're gonna have 10 divided by the square root of two is equal to X over one. So pretty standard starting point. That means 10 over root two is gonna be our X value and also our Y value. But you know, we've been here before. 10 divided by square root of two isn't rationalized. So we need to multiply up and down by the square root in this case of two, in order to clean this mess up. So when we do, we're gonna get that x is equal to 10 square root of two over two, and of course that's gonna to simplify to five root two. And since x is equal to y, since of course this is isosceles, and isosceles right triangle, we can write these, the solutions as x equals y, since they're the same, we'll mark them both at the same time, save ourselves a line, equals five root two. And there is our second special right triangle. So in reality, we've sort of seen in the special right triangle with 45 and 45 degree angles, though it's gonna always be sort of one of the two that we've seen. The first one though, there is one more side that we could give you. So let's see what that looks like. And so that brings us finally to our last problem here, question 7C. And we've got again, two more special right triangles. In this case, we've sort of thrown some weird stuff at you. We've got some square roots that are in there, but maybe not in the place that you were looking for. So let's begin like we have every single time. Let's start by labeling the appropriate sides. We'll have root three opposite the 60, we'll have one opposite the 30, and two on the hypotenuse, aka opposite the 90 degree angle. For the isosceles right triangle, we'll have one and one for the legs of the right triangle, and we'll have root two for the hypotenuse. From here, it's all about setting a proportion, so let's just do it. So looking at this, again, we're going outside, oops, didn't do a good job circling. We'll go outside over inside, so four root three over one is gonna be equal to x over the square root of three. And likewise, four root three over one, which pretty obviously is just four root three, is going to be equal to y over two. From here, just as we have, we wanna get x and y by themselves, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by root three in the first case. That's gonna give me x equals four root three times root three. And let's just go ahead and clean that up right now. That's gonna be four times three, which is 12. Because square root of three times square root of three is three. And then for the y one, we can multiply both sides by two. That's going to give me two times four root three is equal to y, or y equals eight square root of three. So nothing too, nothing too terrible there, like nothing awful, but at the same time, we did have a little bit of square root work to work through, nothing we could, couldn't handle, but we had to take a look at it. Now in our second one down here, our 45, 45, 90 right triangle, we can set this up as well. Before I do though, I wanna point something out. Automatically, we can just state that x equals six root two. The reason for that is these two sides are congruent. So I'm not gonna set up a proportion for that, I'm just gonna take it as a given because this is isosceles, because those base angles, 45 and 45 degrees respectively, are the same. So we're not even gonna play with that. Instead though, we can focus on the other portion of what's here. So we've got one other side to deal with. Going outside over inside, six root two over one, it's gonna be equal to y over two. And then from here, what's nice is we've done so much of this already, we know we just gotta solve for y, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. When I do, I'm gonna put y equals 12 root two, and then as we said before, we already knew x was six root two, because that leg is congruent to the other leg. And with that said, that completes our quick little overview of special right triangles. Hopefully this was enough to sort of put some ideas back in your head, remind you of the proportional setup strategy that we've been using, as well as just to give you a quick resource and reference to actually using those proportions for each of those two special right triangles. If you are personally offended that only these two get to be special, the truth is all the other triangles, every similar one to them would be the same, but their ratios won't be as clean. These are the two that have super clean ratios to work with, hence we uh, run with them quite a bit. So in any event, as with all the videos, Thank you for watching. I appreciate your attention. Hopefully this has been helpful and useful to you. And without further ado, have a great rest of your night or morning or afternoon.
your your call. Bye.